You're living in home sweet home, Hampton Roads. You're living in. The last time we met my client Doug, he was showing us his establishment, Bull Island Brewing Company, in downtown Hampton. He's in the market for a new home. His main criteria was for it to be in Hampton, on the water, and a bit of a fixer-upper so he can use his hands to improve the property and make it into a real show place. We narrowed his choices down to two. The first is this amazing property with not one, not two, but three houses on this huge waterfront lot. As you walk around this property, the thing that amazes me the most is the incredible water views. Basically, all the way around. It's almost like a 3D water view. Some of the neat features of this house is of course that huge floating fireplace. And also when you walk out into the back, there's this deck that overlooks the water. It is so expansive, it's amazing. That place has incredible potential and a waterfront property that definitely needed some work. I really think Doug is gonna love this place. But Doug decided on the second option, a home not only filled with opportunities for updating, but filled with major history, which I learned all about at Hampton History Museum in downtown Hampton. The records for Finn's Point don't go back that far. What we know about the site is that it belonged to a man named Thomas Finn, and he owned the property at the end of the 18th century. He died in 1806, at which point he actually left his property along with a substantial amount of livestock and all of his money to 10 of the enslaved workers that, that worked on his property. When I think about the history of this house and, and all the different stories that have been told, it just makes me once again really excited for my client because he loves this stuff. He loves history, he loves old homes, he loves projects, all of those things fit in line with him. So I'm excited. Some of the features of this house that really gets me excited is of course a lot of the exposed brick. That makes me really happy and I love all the, the wood beams and from what I was told from the listing agent is there's a possibility that those beams are actually original beams, which could very well mean be over 300 years old, which is just insane. Um, I love of course the water view, it's over three, three and a half acres. And then there's all these cute little nifty things inside like on the stairs leading up to the property, there's these horseshoe imprints and I'm like, hmm. So it was interesting to Google to find out a little bit more about that. And then we found a plaque that actually talks about um, when the property was first built. And from what we've gathered, we believe it's 1720. The house that's there now at number 26 is only one small part of the larger property that existed in, in 1806. Uh, so it probably would have been the entire point. You're looking at probably a couple hundred acres. Uh, so he emancipated them and left the bulk of his property to them, if not all of it. Interesting story and it highlights something that, while not common, was also something not unheard of in the antebellum period. Uh, and for at least the next 20 years, uh, the freed Finns worked that property and used it to support themselves. The Finns would have uh, probably managed the cattle and sheep that they inherited from Thomas Finn and they would have grown food crops like corn and wheat, but they would have made most of their income by selling uh, beef and uh, preserved food to uh, shipping companies that took it down to the Caribbean. The water probably served as a means of sustenance for themselves, so fishing to put food on their own table, and as a means of transportation. Uh, the roads in Elizabeth City County would have been pretty rudimentary. It was pretty common for any of the farms on the waterfront to have at least one or maybe two small boats like a bateau or a uh, skiff that they could use for getting up and down Harris Creek or Back River or any of the other waterways around here. We have a lot of trouble today uh, tracking the property rights or other information about what was happening in the colonial period in this area because Hampton was burned to the ground by the Confederate Army on August 7th of 1861. So we know there's this hard date where a lot of information was lost uh, because one of the buildings that was burned was the courthouse. So tax records, um, anything that happened in the court itself, uh, a lot of legal documentation went up in flames in 1861.
So we've seen the house, it's hundreds of years old. Coming up, my friend Tara is gonna cleanse this property of any possible energy. You're living in. Today, I am here to actually coordinate a surprise closing gift for my client, Doug, who just purchased this house over 301 years old. And he'd mentioned a couple of times that he was, I'm not gonna say concerned, but we had conversations about the possibilities of what may be going on in this house, because it's so old. I'm actually here with my friend Tara today, and she's actually gonna do a sage cleansing, and I'm just excited to be able to provide this for Doug. My name is Tara. I actually run a construction company. We do roofing, siding, and pavers, and we also now do interior flooring for LVP. Today I was working at Almond Exteriors, and I was on estimates, and then Anita calls me, and she's like, Tara, I need your help. I heard that you can sage and cleanse a house. I have a house that's about 300 years old, and I really could use your help. And uh, right after my last appointment, I came over to help. When I got here, um, I immediately noticed that the house, yes, is extremely old, and I immediately felt something. Uh, an energy here, not necessarily negative, but definitely a powerful energy that's been here for quite some time needing to be released. Anita and I grounded ourselves in the grass just to just kind of root ourselves, make sure that we're grounded to know, you know, let the spirit know that we're not trying to attack it. So I took my shoes off in order to ground myself, um, again, just to protect myself if there were any negative energy into the house to make sure that it doesn't attach itself to myself or Anita. Well, one of the things that was really important to me was one, that we maintain the integrity of this whole process. Like, I, we're not here to make fun or, or to upset anything or any possible spirits or anything like that. Yeah, we went into the house immediately when I walked in, I was like, whew, you know, an overpowering feeling. So, like I said, I want to give something back to them. I want to cleanse a little bit, just kind of give it a nice feel for them. So okay. So before we begin, we're just going to say a quick prayer okay. um, to help guide us through this and protect us. Okay. okay. It's mostly just trusting your instinct um, and your intuition. So as you walk through the house, you really you don't have to say anything. You just feel it in your heart and your soul. I know that sounds really cheesy and really corny, but it really does work for me. Um, and mostly just sage the house. You cleanse any spirits, including negative and positive. You know, sometimes people don't want those positive energies in their house, um, which is understandable. They kind of want it to be just a fresh slate. And that's really what we were doing. So when I'm walking with the sage, yeah, you can see the smoke, but mostly what's happening is all what's inside of me and not so much of what's happening externally. So mostly what's happening is I'm, I'm protecting the house, I'm cleaning the house while I'm walking around with the sage. And the reason that I go to the corners most and I push my hands out is because I'm pushing all the energy to the light. And the reason I'm doing is that, that is because in the light, darkness cannot go there. That's why I'm pushing it all to the light. definitely points throughout the the process where I was probably like I had an oh my gosh moment or I was just like oh but I just keep thinking about the fact that this house is so old and what, what about the families that lived here or what about the people that encountered this house or came through but you know I I just really want to give my client a clean slate and then we're going to cleanse ourselves before we leave lovely when I got finished with the house um, I saged both Anita and I to make sure nothing attached themselves to us yet again even though we did protect ourselves with the white light the sage is an extra barrier to protect ourselves um, and I felt much better about the presence in the house to know that it's a clean slate for the new owners to come in. Given that we know when the Finns inherited it and that they sold their property off and left um, if there is anything paranormal it would have come from later families on the site uh, say in the late 19th century. My client has found this, this grave site on the property because it's over three and a half acres. And reluctantly, they're making me go and um, I don't want to go. There is a cemetery on the property. Um, we don't know anything about it. Uh, being on private property, uh, it's never been surveyed or anything like that by the city of Hampton. 
uh, and we have no records at the museum of who might be back there. We're walking into the cemetery and immediately lots of other energies are in the cemetery, um, but I know that we're okay because both Anita and I are still protected. I feel like life must have been pretty terrible for the people that were buried there, it was likely slaves or slave owners, um, and the energy does not feel great here whatsoever. Because at the end of the day, I did feel very comfortable and safe with Tara. Um, and I'm just, once again, glad that she's here. That's it. You're living in